Hey, hey there. Hey, let's have a look at that piece of steel that uh, I cut at that uh, higher speed uh, in the last video. Okay. All right. Get unhooked here real quick. Just like that. This is the machine that did it. 1983 Monarch 10 double E inch metric. Okay. Now here's a, here's that chuck. Now that <clears throat> that piece of steel is uh, uh, two and three eighths diameter and getting smaller. <laughs> and, and what we're going to do is we're going to keep cutting on this thing. Now let's have a look at. Uh, well, first let's check while it's standing <clears throat> standing up. I don't have the good gauge um, for um, snap gauge for this size let's see if i can get that on there for some reason oh here we go hold on little catch can loose okay now when it goes all the way clockwise um that's where it is so that's at the top here we are at the bottom and what I could tell with the micrometer, that it's, uh, well, within two-tenths of a thousandths taper <clears throat> in its two and three-quarter inch length. That's how long that piece is. Okay. Now, this is the, uh, let's see if we can get the light on it. This is uh, what the surface looks like. It's really satiny. And it's really very acceptable. Now, the, the taper is always ends up on the end. And uh, we're going to play around with that because that's something we're going to be battling and learning how to do this high-speed turning. And it, you see the satin finish here. What we're going to aim for is more of a finish like this that's, uh, that I didn't cut this time. It's just the slightest shoulder there. So we're going to kind of improve upon this finish. Though this finish is perfectly acceptable. And uh, uh, the, uh, you know, for taper and everything, it, it, it's, it's quite good. Um, when we get down uh, to two inch, um, then I can put the better gauge on it that reads intense, the, the dial uh, snap gauge that reads intense, and we'll be able to uh, quickly, more quickly see. Let's see if I can get that light kind of uh, shined around, and you know, hopefully you can kind of get an idea of uh, what that uh, looks like. I think it's quite acceptable right there, but we're going to improve upon that a little bit. I'm battling this old light on this milling machine needs a little bit. There we go. I'll get that up there. So, yeah, you know, I just want you to see that. I didn't sand it or anything like that. So that's what that looks like. I would turn that at uh, 3,700 RPMs, maybe a thousand and a half depth of cut and a half thousandths feet. So the next cuts I want to do is, uh, you know, to improve finish, I will uh, drop the speed down a little bit to, uh, you know, uh, 3,000, 3,200, and then go a little bit deeper. Okay, we'll try that. And one of the things I, it just uh, came to mind to do um, was uh, I, I, sh I showed in the video um, that I can take a chuck off this machine, take it on over here, and have a little sip of tea on the way. Oh, that's good tea. Okay. And you've seen that I can put that chuck right on this spindle here. This is a 1951 machine. And I can put that truck with that piece of steel in here, and it runs uh, better than a tenth 
true, you know, than it does compared to running on the the beast. <laughs> and I'll show you some advantages to that. And one of the things I can demonstrate for you here is the difference between an older machine and uh, a newer machine um, like the beast over there. Um, this one here, uh, its top speed is 2500 and uh, its finest feed now, this is a manufacturing lathe, and its finest feed is one thousandth, okay? That's as fine as it gets, and that's a handicap. And what that means is we have to increase the radius on the nose of the tool to get an acceptable finish. And that causes more pressure on the work and more deflection. It makes the part larger on the end. And we don't like larger on the end. <laughs> we don't like that. Okay, this very simple machine here, it, <laughs> it doesn't have the selector for threads because there's no lead screw. You know, okay. But what I can do with this machine is do some test cuts and uh, get an idea what an older machine will do on this uh, pre-hard 4140 over here. Yeah. There it is. Oh, this is fun stuff here, don't you think? Okay. So, um... I was asked to uh, point out some uh, simple things on the machine, just the basic levers, and I got a few minutes. I, I think I can squeeze an 11 minute video with my system as is. And uh, I'm working on that. I'm gonna have to just do more stuff. But uh, I've been battling the weather like a lot of you have out there. And uh, this, this is pretty good on crackers, uh, rich crackers. Um, now, the uh, inch metric machine has another lever down here, and um, I think it's this one. <laughs> it's got three levers. So, uh, you switch to the um, metric threads uh, by uh, this lever first. You have to sw you have to move this lever be before you can engage the uh, headstock uh, end gears. When it's in feed like it is now, um, it uh, the only gearing is just simple to uh, that flat drive belt. So um, it has a small flat belt for the uh, for the feed. And when you kick this over into uh, threading, um, it's uh, then you engage the direct in gears to the quick change. So it's uh, kind of interesting how that is. But now when you're switching over to metric threads, this lever has another notch here. And I'm not kidding you, I scrapped two videos trying to shift this thing. And this can be really difficult if the machine has sat for a while, like I've let this sit. And uh, I need to run it quite a bit more, and then it shifts a lot easier into that position. But anyway, you shift it over like that. Let's see if it went. It did. <laughs> I was dinking with this thing for a long time. Okay, so you do that to go to metric mode. Then you kick it up. It's reverse here to go to right hand thread. You kick it over to uh, to here. But I, I, I don't know if it'll go without me turning the spindle. I got one hand. Can't do it. So you click that over to here. Then these two levers have to go into the metric position too. And you really got to double check it because it's all these levers. But once you get used to it, see, so you can switch from uh, inch threading to metric instantly. So that's a pretty cool feature.
Um, we'll get back uh, more. I'm at 10 minutes. We'll see if things work out here with this video. Well, thanks for looking. I'll be back.